Werner Kutsia, CEO of Centergold, joins us now to discuss how technology can be utilised to stop procurement fraud. Werner, welcome. Thanks. Now, tender fraud or tender corruption is a problem not unique to South Africa. It's a global issue. But it's so prominent right now that the phrase tenderpreneurship has been coined. From your perspective, how serious is the problem from both a government and a corporate perspective? It is extremely serious because everything we're trying to achieve, all government's goals, when you waste money on tenders not going in the right direction, all the good things that we are trying to achieve go the wrong way. What is more concerning than just the rent value is that we are slipping in the rankings with Transparency International on the Corruption Perception Index. But what is positive is that at least we're having this conversation. It's out there in the open. We, are, we live in a free society where these things get reported. Now, from a corporate pers perspective, there are systems of good governments, there are checks and balances with the auditing process, yet individuals, individuals are still getting away with it. How are they doing that? I think that a part of the problem is that the structural corruption, and it is kind of accepted, um, also people in power uh, have the ability to influence the, um, the watchdog, so to speak. Now speaking from a technology perspective, Centigal has developed an anti-tender fraud system called TenderSure. How does the system work? Okay, it, was, it is a system that is a complete web application. It's commonly called cloud computing. So it means all the complex functionality is out there in somewhere on the web. Um, it gives you an audit trail and um, it is easy to use. Uh, in a nutshell, you, instead of using the paper system, you, you put it out there on the web and the system automatically ranks all the valuation criteria. So the potential to uh, manipulate it has been removed and also the transparency on how you got to conclusions. Now everything is seemingly moving into the cloud now, but there is still that risk factor. How secure is the tendershare system? We've done every, we designed this with security as a primary concern. So um, we've, even our guys go for regular polygraph test. We have an outside company monitoring for um, unusual activity on the system. So we've done everything humanly possible to check, not only on the process, but on ourselves as well. And from a security perspective, are there only a limited amount of people within the company or the government structures that have access to the system? Because it's always that it comes down to the human element, the jippoing of the numbers, so to speak. We try to keep it a single point of failure, one person. Um, we, we've designed it so that it can only fail with one person. And that person is really, really monitored extremely well. So if anything goes wrong, you can pinpoint it to yes, one individual. Yes. Now, the tendershare system is proudly South African, developed by the South African market for the South African market. Is it applicable to markets outside of our borders, though? Oh, absolutely. This is, it was designed to be a universal tendering system. We looked at best practice in the world, and then we improved on it. Um, uh, Tenders, there's a little bit of a different twist in every country. In South Africa, for instance, black empowerment. Um, other countries might not have that. So it was designed to, to be able to operate in any kind of environment with any legislative uh, milieu in the background. When it comes to submitting your details to the system to go through the tender process, is there a vetting or a verifying step to this as well? Yes. Um, th that uh, picked up a life of, of, of its own. It was very important but to, to put that in there. So what we've developed was a web to collect all the data. Now, the actual vetting uh, would be done by people that specialize in it. We've just made a portal that collect all the necessary data. Tax clearance certificates, B, all the relevant information. It just makes it streamlined faster, more efficient. In terms of its growth and expansion into South Africa, have you seen a lot of corporates? Are you involved with any government departments in rolling out the process? Yes and yes. We um, seem to be doubling our market exposure every nine months. And um, we are involved in interesting talks with several parastatals where we are very positive that it will go well. Now you're using an open source system um, for the tendershare system. How does that come into play? It is just a cost issue, especially in Africa, all the licensing involved with software, we're trying to make it as accessible to the end user as possible. If had you gone with licensed software, the cost would have been prohibitive. So we're trying to make it 
easy and cost effective for people to participate in the process. And also accessible to, to markets that are not as developed. Yes, and in Africa specifically, this continent has embraced, embraced mobile technology on an unprecedented level. So we're trying to make it as mobile friendly as possible as well. And we foresee rolling out complete mobile um, apps soon. Now, but despite your exposure to Africa rolling out there, any plans for rolling out the Tendershire program outside of the African borders? Absolutely. We have already gone into discussions with some of the large consulting companies in the world to partner it. Um, it needs a little bit more of a track record, but we, we've got big plans. Uh, Latin America, India, the BRIC nations, there's several places where we feel it would really work well. So the emerging markets are a big target? I think it's the best target, yes. Adna, thank you very much. Thank you.